Well, thank you so much for having me today. It's, uh, it's a gr great pleasure to be here. Um, well, my journey started with music since I was a child, when I was six years old. I, I fell in love with music when I started to play the guitar and I was self-taught. Uh, that by default primed my voice into being able to sing in, in high notes because I always picked the songs that allowed me to sing in higher range. And then when I was in university um, back in 2008 uh, in the American University of Sharjah, I enrolled in a choir singing course and the uh, professor at that time who was the conductor, he was the one that uh, discovered my voice. And he uh, recommended that I started to train as an opera singer. Of course, that came to me as a great surprise. I, I didn't think that, oh, I'm the first Saudi or anything. It, I just thought, how can I even sing opera? It's, it's not even something I would expect, but it's, um, I'm really grateful for it. And it's a great opportunity and a, what a wonderful thing to be able to uh, get, get something like that discovered in you and it made me really um, it made it made it my purpose to try and inspire others to find their own path and discover their own gems hidden in them I also love to teach as you said so it's it's part of, of, of me as a character I love to teach and pass on uh, knowledge and when I started to train as an opera singer and I started to take vocal training it was really um, interesting for me to see how people's voices are changing with these exercises and certain ways, certain sounds are affecting the voice in different ways. So when I decided to make a career shift in my life, because I was in marketing and advertising before, when I, when I decided to make that career shift, the first thing that popped to me was to teach uh, vocal training and to become a, a teacher. So I enrolled in a course in, um, in a program in New York with the New York Vocal Coaching Academy and I became a voice teacher and uh, with that uh, my greatest push for that was the fact that in Saudi we don't have certified voice teachers and now I'm also working on teaching and training other voice teachers in Saudi because we need we need a lot of them one is not enough <laughs> I cannot say the traditional language to sing opera is Italian but most of um, most of uh, the arias and most of the opera songs are are in Italian. But as as easy as it is to sing in Italian, I prefer to sing in French. Uh, I feel like it suits my my voice more somehow, or, or maybe because I learned I learned French in school and I speak it just a little bit, and um, it sort of brings out my voice in a nicer color. Let's say. I love Habanera from Carmen. It's, it's of course very popular and it's, uh, it's sung a lot by most of the opera singers, but that specifically, I feel like, not just that it's in French and I love to sing in French, it, it brings out my voice in a very nice way as well. And I love the, the character and, and just, this is the nice thing about opera that you get to act and move to different characters in the different songs that you perform. So yeah, that, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I like that song specifically. And of course, I love Edith Piaf's uh, uh, songs. And although it's, it's not in classical opera considered, but still she has such a great voice and her music is loved to a great extent all around the world. And I love to sing it in my own operatic way. When, when you sing in a language that you don't speak, the biggest challenge become, becomes um, perfecting the accent and, and really getting the pronunciations right so you don't sound off. That's the last thing you would want. I mean, imagine someone singing in English and, or Arabic and not sounding like right. You, you sound off in an accent. That's, that's the worst thing. So I always get someone to teach me the song who knows to speak that language. And uh, one of the most recent uh, languages that I'm starting to learn to sing, not to speak yet, is Russian. It's very new to me and the pronunciations are completely different from any other language. So yeah, it's quite interesting to, to sing in a language that you don't speak. Definitely, I see a, a, a very, very bright future for Saudi Arabia in leading the field of opera 
in the Middle East because we are aspiring to add to, the, to opera, not just to participate in it and be part of it. We are aspiring to, be, to add our own identity to it. And this is what we are working on now. And there are great support and great efforts into that. And uh, we, we look forward to great successes. So when I went to perform in uh, La Scala, uh, with, in Riyadh, with La Scala, sorry, I, um, I was so nervous, of course, to be in Riyadh, my first public official performance, with, in such a huge stage. And in Saudi, I mean, that was such a big deal for me. For eight years, I was struggling. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't call myself an opera singer or perform or, or do anything about it because it wasn't going to be accepted. But at that point, I mean, I was in my country and these are my people in front of me. And I, I stood there and I was super, super proud to be there and to be there because of an invitation from the Minister of Culture. I mean, it all happened so quick. It was arranged in a matter of 10 days or less that they saw me in, an, in a media interview that I appeared on and they called me after that. But the fact that they gave all the support and they made it happen, honestly, it gave me such a sense of pride and only more excitement and more inspiration to continue and to carry this forward. Exactly. I mean, before Vision 2030, my family would be concerned that I would appear anywhere singing. And um, even if it was something private, they would still not allow that to happen because I wouldn't also agree on that because it was unaccepted. But the moment Vision 2030 was launched and after that, the, the General Entertainment Authority, all of that changed everything. It gave us all the courage to go and and follow our dreams and support our country and what they're doing. I mean, nothing is impossible. That's what I have to say. Nothing is impossible. If you follow your dreams, if you plan for it, if you set goals for your dreams, nothing is gonna stand in your way. And most importantly, you have to keep your identity intact. You have to show your identity in your art. So make sure you keep your art going and shine it so bright to the world.